Hey guys, this is John with Barbara Standard Tutoring, and this is Stereochemistry Part 1, which we're going to be looking at um, more or less introduction to stereochemistry and how we prioritize to find um, stereoisomers. So when we talk about stereochemistry, what do we mean? Well, stereochemistry is referring to specific sites in a molecule that can have options for different configurations, okay? And those specific, those specific sites are known as stereocytes. Another important term are stereoisomers, and these are referring to molecules that have stereocytes. So what makes a stereoisomer? Well, there are three conditions for what makes up a stereoisomer. They have the same connectivity, they have the same main IUPAC name, but the third and most important part are that there are different spatial arrangements within that molecule, and thus they are different molecules. So let's look at an example here. We have two molecules that have the same connectivity, they have the same main name, 2-bromobutane, but the only difference are that there is a bromine here being wedged and a bromine there being dashed. The only difference is the different spatial arrangements at that point. This point here is a stereocyte. It's actually an asymmetric tetrahedral carbon, one of the three types of stereocytes. And that's what causes this to actually be different molecules. The only distinction is that this is called an R stereolabel, and this is an S stereolabel. And so you'll see that the only difference in the name, this parenthesis here indicates that there are stereolabels present. The entire main name, the main IPEC name, stays the same, but since there's a different stereolabel, they're different molecules. So just keep the rule in mind that a different name means they're different molecules. And this entire name is different than this entire name because of the different spatial arrangement and thus stereolabel. So, how do we know what are stereocytes? Well, I've listed here the three kinds of stereocytes you'll be looking at when you're talking about stereochemistry. You have a, a double bond carbons, you have oppositely substituted rings, and the last and probably a major one you'll be seeing are asymmetric tetrahedral carbons, okay? So, with uh, the double bonded carbons, all you're going to be seeing there is if you find a double bond carbon and different groups bonded off of that, you can either get the E or Z stereolabel. With oppositely substituted rings, like for example this ring here, you're either going to get the cis or trans stereolabel. And with the asymmetric tetrahedral, tetrahedral carbon, that just means you have four different um, paths to go off from that carbon. You can either give the R or S stereo configuration. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean on uh, the asymmetric tetrahedral carbon here because there are two ways you can really um, find what the stereolabel is. And that's by looking at the clockwise method or the hand method. And I'm going to talk in that more detail here when we see how do we actually configure sites, okay? So, how do we find out what stereotype and what label they're going to get? Well, that's when we do configuring these sites. There are two steps to do that. One is how you prioritize groups and atoms, and that's giving them the different numbers, one, two, three, or four. That's actually prioritizing them. And in that sense, we're going to give the highest priority, number one, is going to try and reach the path that reaches the highest atomic number. So, if we go back to our example here with this 2 bromobutane. Our first priority is the bromine because it's the highest atomic number, so we give that the designation one. And then obviously the last priority, number four, is going to be this hydrogen hanging in the back here. And then the two other paths to the two other carbons are going to be two and three respectively. So that's what I mean when I say prioritize groups and atoms. You're going to be giving these different groups and atoms from that carbon either the numbers one through four based on the priority they get. And just remember the highest priority you want to reach the highest atomic number at the first point of difference. Going on to the second part, that's how we evaluate these priorities. And so, for example, with asymmetric tetrahedral carbons, we can do that with the clockwise method or the hand method. So when we go through these examples, um, first through the double, double, double bonded carbons and rings, and then going on to asymmetric carbons. So with the double bonded carbons here, we know that you can get the E and Z configurations, all right? So first we do, priori we do the prioritizing. So in this carbon here, bromine is number one, highest atomic number. With this carbon here, same with the um, oxygen there. So we have to give it the E or Z configuration. Well, they're on the same side of the double bond, so they get the Z configuration, okay? With the second one, all we're doing is we're switching this carbon here. Now, the number one priority is on opposite sides of that double bond, and so we give it the E configuration. For rings, we want to look at what's on the same side of the ring entirely and what's on the opposite side of the ring entirely. So our number one priority is the oxygen here, and the bromine here, they're both on the same side of the ring. They're both being wedged out of the board. So they get the cis configuration. And then here, one of them is just switched. The number one priority now is behind the board, and the bromine stays the same. So they're on opposite sides of that plane. One's up, one is down. And you get the trans stereo label. Now going on to asymmetric carbons, the one you're going to be seeing the most. Again, this is where you can use either the clockwise or the hand methods. You'll be learning this in class. The way you do that, for example, for the clockwise, 
as we, we say, number four is into the board. And if you go around clockwise with one, two, three priorities, then you get the R configuration. If you go around counterclockwise back this way, then number four is into the board, you get the S configuration. So for our first example here, number four is into the board, we're going around clockwise, that's gonna be the R configuration. And the other way here, four is still in the board, but we're going the other way, counterclockwise, so it gets the S configuration. Well, what happens if the four is wedged? Well, that's just a complete opposite. Just imagine that you're looking at it the other way. So four is now wedged, we go one, two, three, around the board there. It is clockwise, but since you're looking at it from behind, you just reverse it. So it would be R, but the, the number four is wedged instead of dashed, so it is S, okay? So that is the clockwise method. The other method you can do is the hand method, and that's when you use your thumb to indicate the direction from the middle carbon to the number four down that bond, and you just see which way your hand closes. If it closes one, two, three with your right hand, then it's the R. If it closes one, two, three with your left hand, then it's S. And you'll be learning that more definitely in class, more in detail in your tutoring sessions. So going from stereoisomers, stereocytes, and how to configure them, we have step-by-step -step ways to designate stereo labels, and uh, that is Stereochemistry Part 1. Stay tuned for Stereochemistry Part 2, and uh, thank you for tuning in.